everyone uses either handsets, earbuds, or mute buttons on their speaker phones and uh, computers as otherwise background noise becomes distracting and makes the meetings difficult. To maintain timelines around subsequent meetings, everyone needs to have dialed into the meetings on time. I'll announce each, each agenda item and introduce staff to present the recommendation. When I call for questions on a matter, if you have a question or comment, please indicate by stating your name. The chair- Donna Thompson will... from Pride Signs. So is this the um, applicant for the first, or the representative? Okay. Yes, so yeah. We'll, yes, we'll it is. That. Okay. Um, if you have a question or comment, please indicate by stating your name. I'll record the request for speakers and we'll ask for anyone else who may have been missed once the list is exhausted. Um, since we advised that we do not have any delegations, I will not go through the ground rule for them, indicating they have 10 minutes to speak. If a committee member would like to propose an amendment to a motion moved or seconded or deferred, please indicate during the question comment period after the motion is on the table. When asked to vote on a motion, please indicate by stating yes if you are in favor of the motion on the floor or no if you are not in favor of the motion. It will also help to check that we have maintained quorum throughout the meeting in case someone's uh, connection fails. Um, right now, I will add to these ground rules. If the applicants, can you please keep your camera off until your presentation starts when requested by staff? So I will now introduce Kayla Delay, Senior Planner, to provide the following comments. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the eighth Committee of Adjustment meeting during the COVID-19 state of emergency pandemic. The purpose of the Committee of Adjustment meeting is to give consideration to minor variants and severance applications. Due to the constraints of the pandemic, rather than a traditional meeting in the council chambers, this virtual meeting will act as a statutory meeting for the Committee of Adjustment planning applications. Staff have posted the notice signs on February 3rd, Meeting Planning Act requirements and meeting materials were posted on our website last week, along with the report, which includes staff's professional planning opinion. If the committee deems it appropriate, they will render a decision tonight. Decisions of the community, committee, of, committee on Planning Act matters can be appealed to the Local Planning Appeals Tribunal once the notice of decision has been rendered. The planner will provide a quick overview of the application, including any public input, and then provide their recommendation. The committee will have an opportunity to ask the planner questions on the application before they vote on the decision. On the phone tonight, we have uh, the appropriate staff, uh, myself, senior planner, Kayla DeLay. We have planner, Dan Nemizniak, and we also have planner, Jessica Kitchen, to assist the committee. I would also like to take this time to introduce the committee to Alyssa Seats. Um, so recently, Alyssa joined our team as the planning administrator and has taken on the role as well as the secretary treasurer for the committee of adjustment. Uh, so you will see Alyssa's smiling face uh, here at the committee meeting. So welcome, Alyssa. And I'll turn it back over to, uh, to you, Mary Jane. Thank you, Kayla, and I will welcome Melissa. I'll now start by taking attendance. Please indicate by stating present when I call your name, starting with myself, present, Mary Jane Brown, Harry Emmett. Present. Bob Hamilton. Present. Daniel Zuloff. Present. Rebecca Smith. Present. Steve Schmidt. Steve Schmidt. Present. Thank you. John Vamos. Present. Thank you. I'll approval of agenda and turn it over to member Schmidt to make the resolution. 
It is moved by myself and seconded by member Emmett that the agenda for the County of Brant Committee of Adjustment meeting of March 11th, 2021 be approved. Thank you, Member Schmidt. I'll ask now if any members have any items to be added to the agenda. It appears there are none. So I will now ask the uh, committee members if you are in favor of the motion, starting with Member Emmett. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Zuloff. Yes. Vamus. Yes. Smith. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Brown. Yes. The motion has been approved and uh, it has carried. I'll now introduce item three, declaration of pecuniary interest and ask any member who would like to declare an, an interest to indicate by stating their name and application number. Uh, yes, this is member Daniel Zuloff. Uh, I have a conflict with application A321D9 or DN, sorry, uh, the 43 McVay Road. Thank you, member Z Zuloff, it's so noted, and we'll ask you to stand aside when that application is heard. I'll now introduce item four, adoption of minutes from previous meeting, and I will turn it over to member Hamilton. Thanks to the chair. Moved by myself, seconded by uh, member Zuloff, that the minutes from the uh, County of Brent uh, Committee of Adjustment meeting on February the 18th, 2021 be approved. Thank you, Member Hamilton. I'll ask if there are any committee members who have any items to be added to the minutes. It appears uh, that, oh, yes. yes. I've, I've, I've got one. It was just to uh, check on, I think uh, it may have just been a typo, but it's showed uh, Member Schmidt seconding a motion and I know he wasn't available. So maybe it should have been Smith versus Smith on, okay. uh, which one was it? Oh, on uh, B1 21 AW and B2 21 AW, Case Vandenberg. Okay. So just, uh, just a, a, an adjustment. Thank you, Member Hamilton. So noted. I will now ask the members if you are in favor of the motion, starting with member Emma. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Zuloff. Yes. Vamus. Yes. Smith. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Brown, yes. The motion is carried and um, we will now move on to the public hearings because I believe the business arising from the minutes have been addressed with member Hamilton's point. Um, I will now introduce item 6A, CA 2114 for application SV 121 JK from Peter Vicano, Arlington Commons and Burger King, 1070 Rest Acres Road. And I will turn it over to Jessica Kitchen for the presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good evening, members of committee. I am here this evening to present on behalf of application SV1-21-JK, and this is for a signed variance for the property located at 1070 Rest Acres Road. Pride Signs is the applicant on behalf of Burger King, who is a tenant of the property, on behalf of Peter Vicano Arlington Commons, who is the owner. The request this evening is for a decision on sign variance application to permit a total of two variance requests to erect a total of five fascia signs on the premise, two of which have already received permits in accordance with sign bylaw 121-08. The subject lands are located on the north side of future Arlington Parkway along the west side of Rest Acres Road within the settlement area of Paris. 
The subject lands are currently under construction to develop a large scale commercial multi-tenant use. Surrounding the land uses include, or sorry, surrounding land uses include commercial and residential uses to the north with predominantly residential uses to the east, south and west. The applicant is requesting relief from sign bylaw 121-08, specifically sections G1 and G3, which pertain to fascia signs, in order to mit, permit a total of five fascia signs, whereas a total of two fascia signs are permitted per premise on commercial properties. The applicant is proposing to erect three fascia signs on the south elevation internal to the site on a wall having an area of less than 100 square meters one fascia sign on the north elevation internal to the site as well, and one fascia sign on the east elevation which directly abuts Rest Acres Road. The variances are requested um, and are in keeping with the corporate branding of Burger King. The applicant has confirmed that the signage proposed as part of this application request will not shake, flash, and or scroll and will not negatively impact the surrounding residential development. No concerns through technical comments and public circulation were raised prior to staff presenting this evening. Staff have reviewed the proposed variance requests with applicable planning policy, as well as comments received from relevant internal departments and the agent. Planning staff are of the opinion that the sign variance is appropriate and meets the four tests of a minor variance as required by the Planning Act. And therefore, we're recommending this evening that the application SB1-21-JK be approved. And I'm here this evening to answer any questions that the committee may have on this application. Thank you. Thank you for this presentation, Jessica. And um, I will now ask if the applicant or agent, which I believe are present, could they start their presentation? Um, it's pretty much like what Jessica had said, the fact that this is part of Burger King's corporate branding, and we feel it's important that they have appropriate signage to clearly identify, and the fact that this building is a standalone. Um, when you compare all the total signage, apparently you're allowed 10 square meters. On the south elevation, even though it has three signs, the total is less than 10 square meters for a total of 5.2 square meters. And then the sign on the north elevation totals uh, 2.3 square meters. So again, it's within the allowance, I think, I feel. Um, and that's about all I can think of right now. And the fact that, like, it is important, you know, you need to clearly identify when you're traveling down the road that people are able to see the location and recognize where Burger King is. Thank you. Um, is that the end of your presentation then? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'll now ask if any members would like clarification on the matter, have a question or co any comment on this application. And if so, please state your name. It appears there are none. So I will turn it over to member Smith for the recommendation. Thank you. Moved by myself and seconded by member of Amos that application SV1-21-JK from Peter Vicano, Arlington Commons and Burger King, 1070 Rest Acres Road be approved as outlined in staff report CA-21-14. Thank you, member Smith. Now members, please indicate if you're in favor of the motion by stating I will when I ask your name starting with member Emma. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Zuloff. Yes. Famous. Yes. Smith. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. And Brown, yes. The motion has carried, the application has been approved. Thank you. We will now move to item B on the application on the agenda for application B30, B321KD, staff report CA2118 from Aaron and Lindsay Plant, 
number 271 Highway 5, St. George, the former township of St. George. And I will now turn it over to Kayla July for the presentation. Thank you. This is a uh, severance application uh, proposing to sever a parcel of land having a frontage of 119 meters and having an area of 2.94 hectares um, and as well proposing a six meter right of way to be used for access. The subject lands are located on the north side of Highway 5 in St. George. The lands are approximately 7.2 acres and are currently vacant with natural heritage features. The retained lands will include a single detached dwelling and accessory building, and the surrounding land uses are primarily rural residential and agricultural lands further to the north. The subject lands are designated suburban residential and zoned suburban residential and natural heritage. The suburban residential designation contemplates for development within existing clusters of suburban residential development. The proposal represents an infill opportunity uh, within the existing residential lots along Highway 5. Detailed comments and conditions from the GRCA and environmental planning ensure that the proposed development will have dry access via the proposed right of way on the retained land and that the proposed dwelling will not be located within any natural heritage features. Planning staff are of the opinion that the proposed consent meets the criteria of the Planning Act, is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the official plan and zoning bylaw, and therefore recommends approval of the application subject to the attached conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Um, I will now ask if the applicant or agent are present, can they please uh, do their presentation? Madam Chair, members, uh, Rob Van Porten, GH Cahoon Engineering Limited. Uh, as noted by uh, Planner Kayla, uh, the application is fairly simple. Um, the overall parcel is four hectares in size and it is proposed to create a 2.9 uh, hectare uh, severed parcel upon which will be established a new single detached dwelling. Mm -hmm. Referring to our plan, note that a majority of the severed parcel is either uh, designated in zone natural heritage or is within the confines of the regulatory limits of the Grand River Conservation Authority. And therefore the parcel may be very large in size. Uh, the, the available buildable area is limited uh, because obviously we have to keep uh, away from the natural heritage area and the regulatory limits. Um, also note that uh, there are two ponds on the severed parcel and which creates a rather unique uh, property boundary because the both the county and the conservation authority require that um, the, um, the natural heritage area which includes the ponds uh, be held under one ownership and, um, and therefore we had to skew the line so that the ponds are within the severed parcel. The primary access to the site uh, will not be by way of the right of way, but by farm access, which is identified on our plan as a driveway access. And there is comments by development engineering saying that the entrance to Highway 5 needs to be improved, sorry, improved. The proposed right of way is an emergency access right of way in the event that the primary access is blocked because of flooding. Uh, this was a requirement of both the county and the conservation authority. And the right of way will primarily follow the existing driveway on the retained parcel. The emergency access right of way will be identified in uh, or on a survey as part of a reference plan <coughs> and will be um, listed on the retained parcel as an emergency access um, to be used by the severed parcel in the event of an emergency. And it'll also be reciprocal comments in the uh, deed of the, uh, of the severed parcel. Um, Madam Chair and members, uh, this is not a unique situation. Uh, we have created these emergency rights away um, previously, and it is in fact, to ensure that um, 
the access to the severed parcel is is ongoing, regardless of uh, of uh, what may happen to the uh, the primary access. Um, Madam Chair, members, I believe those are the um, relevant comments that I I have to make. Um, I I'm obviously available for questions. I also note that uh, the applicant or applicants, uh, the plants are online or or uh, or available for comments uh, or or respond to questions. Madam Chair, that's my presentation, and I respond. I can respond to questions. Thank you, Mr. Van Porten. Um, I will now ask the members if they have any questions or comments or need clarification on this application. It appears there are none. So I will now turn it over to member Vamus for the recommendation. Yes, boot moved by myself and seconded by uh, member Zuloff that application B3-21 KD, Aaron and Lindsay Plant, 271 Highway 5, St. George, former township of St. George, be approved as outlined in staff report CA-21-18. Committee members, please indicate if you are in favor of the motion, starting with Member Emmett. Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Zuloff? Yes. Vamus? Yes. Smith? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. And Brown? Yes. The motion has carried, the application has been approved. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Thank you for your presentation. We will now move on to item 6C on the agenda, application A321DN with staff report CA2115 from Carmela and Jack. Manzo, 43 McVeigh Road, former township of Brantford, and I will turn it over to Dan Nemisniak for presentation, noting that, please, uh, I will request Member Zuloff to recuse himself. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is a minor variance application, as you noted, uh, for 43 McVeigh Road uh, on behalf of Jack Monzo. Um, the committee members would be familiar with with the property, with the subject lands, we've had a number of applications over the years um, aiming to or related to to lot creation, and this is uh, this is an application that was that was uh, is required in order to satisfy conditions of a consent application. So this particular request uh, is seeking relief from the zoning bylaw to permit the following. So we're permitting an accessory structure, an existing accessory structure to, uh, to remain on the property um, in place prior to the construction of the principal dwelling and to permit a maximum lot coverage for all accessory structures of 158 square meters. And this is in recognition of the existing accessory structure where the zoning bylaw currently permits a, a maximum lot coverage for all accessory structures of 140 square meters. So as I mentioned, this request uh, to permit the access, existing accessory structure prior to the construction of that dwelling is required as part of the condition of consent application B319 uh, to allow the lot creation of the new uh, residential lot and has uh, resulted in the additional request to increase the maximum lot coverage for all accessory structures. So this is uh, kind of two parts. One is permitting it prior to the dwelling. Uh, and the second part is uh, recognizing that it's, it's already oversized, um, however it is existing. So staff have reviewed the proposed variance with the applicable planning policy. Um, it is my professional opinion that the minor variance is appropriate, meets the four tests of a minor variance uh, as required by the Planning Act and therefore recommends uh, re recommend that the minor variance A321 that 
um, through the circulation of the committee agenda last the end of last week, I did receive some some questions of clarification from the committee um, who indicated some some possibly some desire to add conditions. Um, so I do have some wording prepared. Um, and uh, so we'll see we'll see what the committee wants to do with that. And if we need to review the wording specifically, um, we can certainly do that as well. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dan. Um, I will now ask if the applicant or agent are present, which I believe they are, can they do their presentation? I believe, Mr. Head, you are on mute. Can you please unmute your mic? Am I unmuted now? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to make it to the meeting tonight with the storms we've had. My internet was down, and fortunately, it came up on time so I could attend the meeting uh, on the Zoom meeting. Uh, my name, Madam Chair, members of the committee, is Samuel Head. I'm a planning consultant in Kitchener. I've uh, basically taken over some of the files from uh, the former planner working on these files. Uh, and uh, Jack has asked me to continue with the files in question. Uh, there's 14 conditions under B319 that have to be addressed. And this is condition number seven. And the condition basically says to make an application to the Committee of Adjustment to recognize the oversized shed that's on the property. Uh, the lot in question is going to be conveyed to uh, Jack's son, Frank. And Frank wanted to keep the accessory building for his use in the future when he builds his new house. The, uh, we Discuss the conditions with the owners and they're in support of the two conditions in the staff report as recommended as noted by Dan. Uh, Dan and I discussed some additional wording that the committee was to consider tonight. And I have some concerns with the notion that uh, these conditions be added. Uh, I'm okay today with condition number one because the condition number one as proposed is already in the decision of B319 and this is just a repeat of the existing condition. I'm not in support of a, a recommendation that requires the owner to build a house within a year. You've approved three other lots on this property and none of those conditions require the owner to build a house. It's putting an onus on Frank to arrange early financing, sell his existing house, transfer the title to himself, have a house design, hire the contractors, builders and so on and to do that all within a year. Uh, it's gonna take a number of months to get the deeds finalized, to clear all the conditions and get this thing done. So I'm asking the committee not to impose a condition that requires us to build a house on the property. You wouldn't do this in any other subdivision or plan or consent. So why would you do it on this particular case? So I don't think that is appropriate. And I discussed this with Dan and suggested I wasn't in support of it. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that the committee may have, any committee uh, staff members as well. And I would be in support of the two conditions as recommended by staff in the report. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Head. I will now uh, pose it to the committee if any members have any questions or any comments on this application, specifically regarding the two uh, conditions which are not... Uh, the applicant is not in agreement to add. Ms. Smith? Here, yes. Um, through the chair to the applicant, when is the owner proposing to build the house on the property with the shed? He hasn't uh, decided that yet because I still have to create the lot. I've got 14 conditions to satisfy. This is one of the conditions. This is condition number seven. I still have to deal with the grant reservation. I still have to approve to build a driveway into the property. I still have to go through the press process of creating the lot and the deeds and so on. So there's no time frame on this lot as there is no time frame on the other three lots that this committee approved uh, last year. Yeah, I so, think the difference is, so you have to meet those conditions within the year regardless. The worry is yep. that that shed gets left on the property by itself and it technically is an accessory building. So that was the concern with the condition. Well, it's not gonna be left on the property by itself as a, as a shed. We're, there's gonna be a house built on the property. That's the whole reason for creating the lot. 
as we create the other three lots, there are going to be houses built on those lots as well. And I can't recall in the years I've been doing planning that you're required to build a house on a lot. Eventually, someone is going to build a house on a lot, and it's going to be Frank Jr., his son. So putting a condition they do within a year, that's difficult to enforce. You know, what if I'm off by a few months, you know? Has the committee put this on other lots? You know, you got to build a house within a year. You know, I'm not aware of any. Are there any? Yes. All. I may just have one more comment. I just, I think the condition, there's, there's not really a set date. I think it was just the concern that sometimes when these things are allowed, the accessory building gets left there on its own for a long time period. And I don't think that's the intent. So I'm not here to have a discussion about it. It was just a recommended condition. Yeah. If I don't satisfy the 14 conditions, the minor variance doesn't matter because then the condition has been satisfied and the shed stays with the house that uh, Jack owns. So I have to satisfy all these conditions before I can create this lot. So I think there's a bit of onus on the owner to say, you gotta build a house within a certain time frame. You wouldn't do that at any other lot. And those are my comments, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Thank you. Are there any other committee members who wish to comment on this? Member Hamilton here. I've got uh, two points. I'm looking for clarification. So through the chair, and I'm not sure uh, if it goes to the planner or, or to the applicant. Number one, by leaving that shed there, that's fine. But uh, we're only stating what, 1.5 meters? going into those big doors, I don't think you could take a Volkswagen and put it in there over five feet and make it in without running over the property line or will they change the doors on the building? Uh, that's that's question number one. So I don't know uh, if Dan wants to do that or Mr. Head. I can respond to that, Madam Chair. I spoke to Jack and he has agreed that the doors will be moved facing the other way so that the doors that are in question on the side will be closed and new doors will be created on the front. Thank you. Uh, point number two is, uh, I, I'll put this to uh, through the chair to staff, the clarification on the hydro lines. Mm -hmm. Is the hydro coming off McBay Road to the uh, shed first, then to the house, or is it from the house out to the shed and is it coming off Harris Road at that point? So. Uh, I, I just need to understand that point a little better for disconnection of the hydro. All right, I was gonna, I know uh, Sam and I discussed these these points that were in my report uh, in quite detail. So I'll, I'll let Sam provide that response as well. <clears throat> Again, I, I spoke to Jack about the hydro and he tells me that there's a separate meter in the shed. So it gets a separate billing for hydro. And at some point, uh, the new house will require a new hydro service. And if that's the case, then that can be connected to the shed as well. At the most, it'll be a temporary situation. So there's no problem then in disconnecting the uh, current hydro uh, once the lot gets formed? Well, once the lot gets formed, they're gonna need hydro service for construction to build the house for equipment and so on. And once that's done, the hydro line will obviously be put in like any normal house. It'll be a, a separate meter for the, the house and the shed. But would it be coming off McBay Road then? Uh, yes, I assume it would because that's where the frontage is. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Are there any further questions or comments on this? I do have a question on it, the proposed conditions. In reading them, um, I don't see the concern over one year as it doesn't explicitly refer to it. So is it implied in conditions two and three that a building has to be erected within one year? Perhaps staff could answer that. Madam Chair, to clarify, the, the, con the condition uh, indicates that a building permit be issued for that principal dwelling within 
uh, one year from the creation of the lot. And that was, that was the intention from the committee. So I, I generated this wording based on the committee's request to have something prepared if they wish to add. So then and the if we, building... we can modify. Okay, thank you. So then I will ask if there's any other further comments or questions on it. Then I will turn it over to member Emmett for the recommendation, noting that uh, your motion should include which conditions you are proposing to add to your recommendation. Okay, it's moved by myself, seconded by member Schmidt, that application A321 DN Carmelo and Jack Manzo, 43 McBay Road, former Township of Brantford, be approved as outlined in the staff report CA 2115 and just add condition one of the extra conditions that we were circulated today. Thank you, Member Emmett. Members, please indicate if you are in favor of the motion, starting with Member Emmett. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Vamus? Yes. Smith? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. And Brown? Yes. The motion has carried. The application has been approved, noted with the additional condition number one. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Rebecca, nice to see you again. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. We will now move to item 6D, staff report CA 2116 for application A421DN, Vicano Developments Limited on behalf of RC Realco Holdings, Inc., 71 Full Setter Drive in Paris. And I will turn it over to Dan Nemisniak for the presentation. Thank you again, Madam Chair. Uh, again, this is a minor variance application for 71 Full Setter Drive in Paris. Uh, this site's located in the Brandt Industrial Park off of Rest Acres. Um, this, uh, this application is requesting relief from the zoning bylaw to permit a street setback from Addy Dassler Way of 5.5 meters, where the zoning bylaw currently requires a street setback of nine meters. The reduced street setback uh, to Addy Dassler Way is required in order to facilitate a uh, building expansion to the existing building, uh, being the industrial uh, facility. The building addition is subject to site plan control uh, amendment application SP321, and uh, which is currently in circulation. The existing building was subject to uh, original site plan application SP9 back in 2016. Uh, staff have reviewed the proposed variance uh, with applicable planning policy. I can confirm that no public comments were received as part of this application. Uh, it is my professional opinion that the minor variance is appropriate and meets the four tests as required by the Planning Act and planning staff therefore recommend that minor variance application A421 uh, be approved. I will also uh, mention that similar to the previous application, um, some comments of clarification from the committee um, did indicate the desire to perhaps add a condition or, or modify uh, the wording of the recommendation just to specifically capture um, the portion of the building that this minor variance applies to. So specifically the, I believe it was the Southeast corner if I have it right, but uh, as indicated on the site plan. So uh, I did circulate that, that uh, idea to the, the applicant who confirmed they had no issues with that. Um, that is the intention of, of uh, staff's recommendation. So again, I'll leave that up to the committee if they wanted to modify the recommendation or add that as a condition. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Dan. I'll ask if the applicant or their agent are present and could they start their presentation? 
Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Yaya Sun with Vicano Developments on behalf of Apogee Ceramics, Inc. Um, so our client is experiencing a robust growth and uh, they're in dire need of expanded warehouse space for their uh, ceramics operation. Um, as you as was circulated, you can see that uh, we are proposing uh, approximately 2,500 square meter um, addition on the rear of the existing building. Um, so when the original site plan um, was approved, I, I don't believe that Addy Dassler Way uh, existed. Um, and when the uh, client approached us for the expansion, they wanted to follow the original building design, which now encroaches on the uh, street setback, um, which is um, nine meters. Um, we're proposing that the street setback be reduced to five and a half meters um, just so that we can maximize the building area um, so that the uh, client can um, kind of make uh, the most efficient use of the lands. Um, uh, Dan did come to me and propose that um, the variance be limited to that southeast corner and we have no issues with that. Um, as you can see on the proposed plan, um, if the client does experience uh, a further need for expansion of the building, we'll, uh, we're, we'll, we'll propose um, expanding to the north side of the, um, the building face there. Um, we feel that the variance request is minor in nature and uh, we are hoping that the committee <laughs> approves this for our client. Um, as, as Dan stated, we are, we have submitted for site plan approval. We're well underway and um, we're hoping that um, this can be finalized so that uh, the site plan approval can go forward. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I'll uh, now ask if any members would like clarification or have questions or comments on this application. It appears there are none. So I will now turn it over to member Hamilton for the recommendation, noting that uh, an additional condition was proposed. If you could please refer to it in your uh, recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by member Smith, the application of A4-21-21 DN Vicano Development Limited on behalf of RC Realco Holdings Limited, 71 Full Sutter Drive, Paris, be approved as outlined to the staff report CA 21-16 with the uh, condition that uh, the minor variance be applied to the southeast corner, if that's the correct corner uh, of the uh, when the building is being built. Thank you, Member Hamilton. I will now ask the committee to indicate if you are in favor of the motion, starting with Member Emma. Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Zula? Yes. Famous? Yes. Smith? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Brown? Yes. The motion has carried, the application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. You're welcome. We will now move to item 6E on the uh, agenda. Staff report CA 2117 for application A221 KD from Jessica Latinsky and Dylan Osteros agent on behalf of Matthias Osteroth and Lisa McKessock, owners of 21 Painter Road, Brantford. And I will turn it over to Kayla July for the presentation. Uh, thank you. I have to apologize, my internet dropped, so I've just phoned in. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can, can hear. Can you hear me? Okay, great, thank you. This is a minor variance application and the applicants are seeking to construct an accessory building 
which will include an additional residential unit referred to as an ARU. Um, they are requesting relief to permit an accessory structure height of 5.8 meters, whereas five is permitted. And the applicant is also requesting relief to permit an additional residential unit to be located a maximum of 75 meters from a principal dwelling, whereas 40 meters is permitted. The lands are located at 21 Painter Road, former township of Onondaga. The property is located on the west side of Painter Road and the east side of Johnson Street. The subject lands are designated rural residential and zoned residential hamlet and villages in the County of Brant zoning bylaw. Staff believe that the proposed accessory structure and ARU relief request is minor in nature and appropriate development of the subject lands. The applicants have noted that the ARU will be used to have an aging family member in close proximity to each other, which aligns with the intent of the ARU policies which aim to provide flexible and affordable housing options. The proposed additional height is required for a lift and storage of an RV. It's staff's opinion that an increase in height represents appropriate development for the subject lands. Um, as for the site visit and aerial imagery, the accessory structure is consistent with area characteristics. There is landscaping between the adjacent properties and there are other similar size accessory structures in the area. The location of the ARU is appropriate given the constraints of the creek and topography of the land. The proposed accessory structure will continue to be accessory to the principal dwelling in terms of visual presence. Overall, staff is of the opinion that the minor variance request is in keeping with the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and official plan, is minor in nature and appropriate development on the subject land. Planning staff are recommending that the application be approved subject to, to the attached conditions. And I'm happy to answer any questions that the committee may have. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. I'll now ask if there are any questions or comments from the committee members on this application. It appears there are none, so I will turn it over to member Hamilton for, oh, sorry, wrong one. I will now turn it over to member Schmidt for the recommendation. Member Schmidt, you are muted. Please unmute your mic. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, it's moved by myself and seconded by Member Zuloff that application A2 21 KD from Jessica Latinsky and Dylan Osteroth, agent on behalf of Matthias Osteroth and Lisa McKessock, owners of 21 Painter Road, Brantford, be approved as outlined in staff report CA 21 17. Thank you, Member Schmidt. Committee members, please indicate if you are in favor of the motion, starting with Member Emmett. Yes. Hamilton. Member Hamilton, you're muted. Can you please unmute your mic? Um, point of interest, uh, are we going to allow uh, the applicant to make a comment? prior to a, uh, 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 going through with this? I don't believe Jessica Pardon? had a chance to talk. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I'm okay. Sorry. I, um, I just pretty much agree with everything that Kayla has said um, and I'm here for any questions. I don't believe there were any comments or questions from the committee members. So I will return to member starting with who is in favor of the motion, starting with member Hamilton now. Yes. Zuloff. Yes. Vamus. Yes. Smith. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. And Brown, yes. The motion has carried. The application has been approved. Thank you. And Thank you. I do apologize for <laughs> missing your input. That's okay. <laughs> That's Thank what you. happens with remote meetings and flipping through pages. 
Thanks That's again. Okay. <laughs> The next meeting, it appears, is to uh, is expected to be for April 8th, 2021, and um, the tentative meeting date for May is May 20th, 2020. And if there are no other matters, I will ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting, and I will turn it over to Member Hamilton. Thanks. Thank you to the chair. Moved by myself and seconded by uh, Member Emmett uh, to uh, uh, finish the meeting. Thank you, Member Hamilton. I will now declare the meeting adjourned. And I, the meeting for the Committee of Adjustment, we will now move on to the uh, Property Standards Committee agenda. And at this point, is there anyone who isn't able right now that they require a break or anything that I, can I call the meeting to order? Okay, I will now call the meeting of the Brant County Property Standards Appeal Agenda to order. And I will call each member's name and please indicate you are present by stating present. Mary Jane Brown, present. Harry Emmett. Present. Bolton. Present. Daniel Zuloff. Present. Rebecca Smith. Present. Steve Schmidt. Present. John Vamos. Present. I will now move to item two on the agenda, approve vote of the agenda and I will turn it over to member Vamus for the resolution. Um, moved by myself and second by member Emmett that the agenda for the County of Brant property standards meeting of March 11th, 2021 be approved. Thank you, member Vamus. I'll ask any members if they have any items to add to the agenda. It appears there are none. So members, please indicate if you are in favor of the motion, starting with member Emmett. Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Zuloff? Yes. Vamus? Yes. Smith? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. And Brown, yes. So the motion has carried and the agenda has been approved. I'll now introduce item three, declaration of pecuniary interest. And if any member has an interest to declare, please indicate by stating your name and there is only one member, one item under appeal. Please notify us now. It appears there are none. So we will now move to item four on the agenda, uh, adoption of minutes from the previous meeting. And I will turn it over to member Hamilton. Thank you to the chair. Moved by myself and seconded by member Smith that the minutes of, and I, maybe we should change this, the uh, county uh, of Brent uh, property standards meeting um, of September the 17th, 2020 be approved. Thank you, Member Hamilton. If there are any members that have any items to add to the minutes or changes or corrections, please note them now. It appears there are none. So I will now ask the members of the uh, committee to indicate if you're in favor of the motion, starting with member Emmett. Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Zuloff? Yes. Vamus? Yes. Smith? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. And Brown, yes. The motion has carried and the minutes from the previous meeting have been adopted. 
We will now move on to item six, public hearings for 34 Walnut Lane in Paris. And I will turn it over to Officer David Kelly for his report. I believe Officer Kelly is present or no? Yeah, I'm right here. Thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So on uh, County of Brant bylaw, I started receiving uh, calls in regards to a recreational vehicle being parked at the rear of the property located at 34 Walnut Lane, Paris, in the County of Brant. They started coming in on the, uh, the 8th of April, 2020. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and the Ontario emergency orders, which were put in place by the provincial government, the County of Brant took the position to stay in enforcement of RV trailers on residential lots, um, basically to allow for um, people needing to quarantine from their family, that sort of thing. On May 19th, a letter, May 19th of 2020, a letter was mailed out to the property owners of 34 Walnut Street, Paris County of Brant. In the letter, which is attached to the uh, presentation, uh, the requirements for the storage of RVs were explained to the property owner. On the 9th of November, 2020, at approximately 2.50 p.m., I attended at 34 Walnut Lane in Paris in response to a complaint received once again about the RV that was parked on the grass of the rear of the property. I left the card with a female party at the property who stated she was the daughter of the property owners. No contact was made by the property owners. As a result, a proper standards order was issued and sent registered, registered mail to the property as well as hand delivered to a mail party who identified himself as a property owner. The order directed the removal of the RV trailer from the rear yard to an offsite location. The compliance date was December 15, 2020, and an appeal was received by the County of Brant. On the 2nd of March, 2021, approximately 10.05 a.m., I attended the area, once again, just to confirm the status of the RV, the RV was still in the same location on the property as previously noted. Two photographs were obtained and they are attached to this report. That concluded my involvement in this matter. Is the... Applicant, the appellant present. There is no I'm one sure. appealing here. Through the chair, I have sent notice to the appellant and we have reached out by calling three phone, num phone numbers and left voice messages. Um, and nobody has gotten back or returned a call or tried to get information to attend this meeting tonight. Thank you. I noted that you had um, submitted an addendum, but it is dated December 14th. So that is the last contact we had from the appellant. Oh, okay. Right. Then I will ask, I will put it to the members to uh, have a discussion on this if you have any comments or what I have is basically the order is requiring that the RV be removed. I will pose this to Mr. Kelly. So is there a deadline being imposed as to when because we're now at March and it appears the bylaw allows it to be parked from May 1st to October 31st. So if we were to enforce removal of it, could they just bring it back within a few weeks? They, they very well could. However, um, parking it on the rear of the property on grass is not something that's permitted in our zoning bylaw. Uh, they have to be parked on a prepared surface, so a driveway, gravel, and that sort of thing. So where it's parked, number one right now is a, is a concern and a violation. And number two, the time frame 
in which is parked there is also in violation of zone bylaw. So if they do, uh, essentially, if they bring it back, they would have to park it in their driveway and not on the grounds. Thank you for that. Then I'll ask the other members of the committee if they have comments or questions on this. Uh, Member Hamilton to uh, Mr. Kelly. Uh, when you did talk to the individual in December, uh, what kind of response did you get at that time? Or was it you just handed them the, uh, uh, the summons and that was it? They, they didn't seem very receptive as far as um, wanting to comply. They took a position where they would be seeking some legal advice and, and, and appealing and that sort of thing. So, excuse me, they, they didn't seem to be that they wanted to play ball and, and come into compliance here whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you, Member Hamilton. Are there any other committee members who would like to um, discuss this? Hey, Member Zuloff, um, I mean, I noticed in their letter they don't give any real date that they're going to move the, pro the uh, RV by, just a very vague sort of when the COVID emergency is over. So I don't know that we even have a date that we could even vote on specifically. I, we either have to just impose on ourselves or or just go to uphold the, uh, the original order. Thank you, Member Zula. Then if there are no further comments or questions from the committee, I will ask I will turn it over to Member Schmidt for the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Um, it is moved by myself and seconded by Member Emmett that the property standards order of 34 Walnut Lane be upheld uh, by the original order. Thank you for mem Member Schmidt for the recommendation. I will now ask the members to indicate if you are in favor of this motion, starting with Member Emmett. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Zuloff. Yes. Vamus. Yes. Smith. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. And Brown, yes. The motion has carried, the appeal has been denied and the order will be upheld. I would um, now move on that if there are no other matters, um, or if there's any members who have any comments on this, there appears to be none. Then I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting and I will turn it over to member Hamilton. Thanks to the chair. Moved by myself and second by member Smith uh, that we uh, declared the end of this meeting of the property standards. Thank you, Member Hamilton and Smith, and I will declare that the meeting of property standards is adjourned. Thank you for all the attention.